Hey there, welcome back. Uh, we're now going to start to work through some of the tools that we can use to execute Python now that we have a local development environment set up. Um, just really quickly, if you are a Windows user in basic or premium prep, then you should go back to that Windows installation page. And in that last video, Remy does a good job of explaining how you can use the Windows prompt uh, to execute code and open code in uh, VS Code using that Windows command line. Um, but if you're in basic prep or premium prep or in DSi pre-course and you're working on a Mac or a Linux machine, then this is going to be really relevant to you. So the first tool that we're going to take a look at is going to be just the regular Python shell. And you can get to that shell just by using the simple command Python. And when you do that, you can see it actually brings up uh, which Python version you're using, 3.7.7. And it tells you a little bit about, you know, when that was released, et cetera, et cetera. And you have these triple uh, greater than signs. And that is just sort of your prompt, right? I can type here and that is where the letters will actually go. So here, right, we can just go ahead and type in any Python code that we would want and execute it by hitting enter, right? I say print hello world, it prints hello world. This also does have like some memory, right? I can say x is equal to five. I can go ahead and print x. It will go ahead and print out x. I could also say, let's say definition of uh, my funk, and let's just say it takes in a uh, number and it returns, uh, let's say it returns the square root of that number as one item and then it returns that item squared as the other number. And um, to actually get that to finish, right, to tell it I'm done writing my function because it was able to sense when I wrote that function header that I wasn't completely done writing my code. So when I hit enter, instead of executing, it actually took me to the next line. I used my space bar, went out four spaces, wrote my return statement, and now I can actually call this header, or excuse me, call this function, invoke this function. So if I go ahead, right, I'm gonna wanna print this, and I'm gonna wanna go ahead and print uh, my func, and let's go ahead and use, what's a number? Uh, nine is a good number, nice even square. And it looks like I misspelled, wrong kind of funk, although I like that kind too. Um, you can see here, right, I have used a float as the exponent and therefore I've gotten a float back for my square root, but the square root of nine is three and three and nine squared, excuse me, is 81. And I get that returned in a tuple. So I have this uh, memory sort of function in this command line and I can define functions and do other things. This isn't really a great tool if you're trying to work on like a large block of complex code, but let's say you just need a quick calculator or you have a small code snippet that you're working on, maybe something in the learn, uh, one of the challenges, or um, a lot of the times I think the lessons have some the lessons will have examples of code that would be good for you to copy and paste. You can go ahead and copy and paste some of that code from your screen or your browser window and go ahead and paste it in here and just execute that code and see what happens, right? You can see what comes out of that print statement. You can read the error messages, things of that nature. But this is just a really quick and easy way to run some really quick Python code. Uh, you're not really writing it in a file. You're not saving it or anything along those lines. So that's just important to keep in mind. You want to use the right tool for the right job. And this tool is good just for little pieces of, of test code or little snippets of code. I would say, you know, this is the type of tool that you should use instead of Replit, right? If you're trying to just do something really quick and easy, you know, a lot of the times I'll open up a REPL, but um, I'd probably be better served just by opening up a terminal and typing Python and getting right in here. Now, to actually edit, there's a function called quit, and it's a Python function, and you would have to invoke that just like you would invoke any other function, and that is quit followed by an empty pair of parentheses. There are no parameters to quit, but I go ahead and execute that, and it takes me back to my command prompt. Now, 
There's one other shell. That was the regular Python shell. There's one other shell or console that you can use. It works very similarly, and that is IPython. So uh, very similar keyword or command to get it started. But instead of Python, we're going to say IPython. And this works in a very similar world uh, way, right? This way I can say uh, print hello world again. And it prints me hello world. Um, this is, IPython was actually the precursor to the Jupyter Notebook. If you've worked in one of those, this sort of input with the numbered uh the numbered cells might make a little bit of sense to you, but I have the same sort of functionality, right? I can define some variable and then print that variable, right? And maybe one difference, the way, the main difference between the IPython console and the regular Python console is if I just go ahead and type X here, right? I don't actually need a print statement. I can get some output. Um, and as a matter of fact, if I have some series of commands, um, let's say x uh, increments by five, and then x um, is also multiplied by five, right? Then, um, right, I can do this and I get my output again. So that's a little bit different in the IPython console. Um, again, right, I can define a function. Uh, I can say my function and right, I'll just write the same function for the sake of simplicity. I hit enter, it actually tabs in for me automatically. That's a nice little tool, but I can go ahead and return uh, num times 0.5 and num squared, right? And then shift enter to actually tell it that, hey, I'm, I'm finished entering this function. And then I can go ahead and run that function uh, without the print statement this time, and I can get that output, a tuple, right? I could assign that output to a variable, anything along those lines. Um, there is some extra functionality um, in the the IPython console, right? It's uh, IPython stands for interactive Python. There are ways to write multiple line statements in one single input. I'm not gonna go through that here, but you can see up there in the corner, it says type question mark for help. And if I do that, right, this actually gives me a nice little help menu and I can use enter to scroll through that, you know, and this tells me some of the nice things that actually help, right? Um, this gives me uh, the, some features like access to the standard Python help. It gives me magic commands, system ali aliases, um, dynamic object information um, and typing, you know, tab completion, um, looking at previous commands in, in several different ways, uh, a persistent command history across all your different sessions. So if you need to go back and look at something, there is a way to do that. Uh, a logging of all input, same sort of thing with the ability to save and restore a working session. That's a big difference between the regular Python console, which you where you can't really save. But you can sort of get the idea here. I'm going to go ahead and um, look like the... The Q was how I was able to get out of that. Um, you can explore that menu a little bit on your own. But again, we're talking about the right tool for the right job. And more often than not, when you're using this tool, it's likely you're going to be using it for something that is relatively quick and easy, pretty lightweight. You're not going to do any work that's particularly complicated. Although you can see here, it might be a little bit easier to do something that is a bit more complicated than just the regular console. So those are our two shells that we use with Python. Uh, this shell, you actually quit in the same exact way, run that quit function and you're all done. Those are our two shells, quick introduction to them. Uh, in the next video, we're gonna talk about using VS Code in combination with our terminal to edit and execute our files. That's the way you're gonna do most of the work in the DSI. And that's actually most the way you should do most of your work throughout this pre-course. And, or if you're in basic prep, it's also a really good way to be working on your challenges, right? Start to build those habits now. Um, yeah, so look forward to seeing you in the next video. We're gonna talk over VS Code and the terminal working together and then 
in the next lesson, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Jupyter Notebooks and Google Colabs, which is just a web-based Jupyter Notebook. So that's it for this video. I look forward to seeing you over in the next one.